in the floodgates of the Akosombo Dam. The water that came gushing down caused a lot of devastation. Initially, as a media house, we began by telling the story of the people. But soon, management of the organization, the city of Mercedes TV, noticed that beyond going to report on the problems of the people, there is a need to support them, relief items. You, our viewers and our listeners, brought us relief items and cash donations, which we distributed. But subsequently, management decided there was a need to do more. And because the people have been displaced and they were living in school blocks like this one, the Topo RC Basic School, management thought, let's put up a shelter for these people. So exactly a month ago today, on October 26, 2023, management of CTFM and CDTV came to these very grounds to break the ground. Let me remind you of what transpired. We are doing this to the glory of God and to encourage other corporates to do the same in other affected communities. It is one nation, one country, one people. Groundbreaking effectively has been done. Thank you so much. God bless you. Well, so that's what happened. The ground was broken, the prayers were done, work started, and today it is revealing to see that one month on, beautiful, beautiful structure standing where it used to be pure grass. This is the project that is happening in earnest. The roofing stage is happening all over. You can hear carpenters hammering away. The masons have done pretty much a lot of their job, but they are still doing the plastering section of the building. So the smooth part being plastered, the rough part are still waiting for the plastering to happen. And these are local workers that we have employed. When we came to this area, we said that we needed to use the local artisans to do this work. Even though we brought our own foreign um, supervisors, we have the local artisans, the masons, the carpenters, the iron or steel benders doing their own work here. And we put one person in charge. Um, Selassie is a foreman here. So you started from foundation. Walk me through the project up to where we are now. Okay, from uh, foundation excavation, they will cast uh, our foundation concrete. Then we'll do our foundation block work. Then the oversight concrete will come. Then the spa structure begins. So now we are at the roofing level. It's level with the sheet. What is your estimation? When would you finish this um, initial work before we start the finishings? Uh, let's say by 10, 12 days time, I will be able to complete everything. So by 10, 12 days time? Yeah. But by how many days before the people can move in? Let's say... Okay, by 21 days time. By 21 days, yeah, so in people, three weeks time, yeah, people, people can easily move. Yeah. So Selassie is the man supervising the work on the ground, but the man who designed this on paper for us to lift and put on the ground um, is, like I said, in the first day uh, when we were cutting the soil, is our co-beneficiary grant, who just uh, graduated from the KNUST. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, so what you put on paper is manifesting here. Is this how you designed it to be? Okay, so uh, in design we have skeleton and then the finishing so actually the skeleton is coming out the way i wanted to come out so we are still putting things together and i'm collaborating with the project management to get the finished work so uh, i think in three weeks time we will come and witness the finished work which will showcase every element of the design i'm going to walk through just look at some of the uh, things that are happening in here walk through the rooms Careful plastering happening as uh, we are seeing that. Are you calling me? Nice, nice, nice. In three weeks' time, like Salasi is estimating, when we come here, people will be moving into these rooms. And uh, it's part of the grand project that we are doing. So the day we did the sword cutting, um, we were supported by the district chief executive for the Shai Sudoku district of the greater Accra region, uh, Mr. Um, Fred O'Fair. Today, he's here with us as well to, to see things for himself. We're here together on 26th October to do the groundbreaking. 
is a month on. This is what we have on your land. Your comments. <laughs> I said hmm, because I'm overwhelmed. Mm. And to be honest with you, I appreciate what I have just seen. And the only thing I will keep on saying is thanks to CTFM. So we appreciate whatever you've done for the district. To be honest with you, uh, I'm short of words. And everybody can see the edifice of what we are, we, are, we, are, we are in now. And within just a space of three weeks, and this thing is up, by next week it will be roof. So within the space of one month that we said, really, the building can be completed. It is a Sunday morning, characteristic of Christian homes and Christian communities. We see church services. The church and the house have all been submerged by the water in the Abovieno and Jokpo areas. So these people having to come here have converted the trees behind the school blocks into their church. And that is what is happening now. Uh, there's a church service happening. Actually, two separate church services happening for the people who live here. Um, there is a first one here and the second one over there. I see a pastor who is uh, leading the congregation. I'm just going to go in and listen in to what they're saying. Also, the church service is in full earnest. I just want to corner the catechist here and see if I can speak to him briefly. Yeah. How is the situation like? Uh, you are dealing with people who are in a very, very difficult situation. Yeah, actually, it's not easy, but the church, actually, the head from Accra, the diocese, they've managed to get some items to support the victims, so we are managing it a little. So this is Catholic Church? This is Catholic Church. I see. Yeah. And so you've been doing this since the flooding happened? Yes, please. I see. Like I said, the churches well, that are happening here too, this is a Catholic Church. I'm going to go to the other side of this school compound where there's another church activity happening to see what the situation is. What is just something I noticed at the Catholic Church, the church service was happening in every language. Over here, the frequency has switched. They're speaking Dangme. So the hymn, Hold My Hand, Hold My Wrist, is um, the call that has been made here for service as this pastor begins his uh, um, sermon for today. Life moves on despite disaster. When I came here, people had set up hearth like this where they were using to cook. Uh, they were trying to adjust, and this was over a month ago. One month on, life is becoming normal for them, except that you can never have normality outside your home. There was a lady I interviewed, a pregnant woman. I have just been given the good news that she's delivered while at this particular school premises at Topo RC Basic School. I've been invited to share in their joy. I'm going to see what's happening. Vijay Naneri. Agu. Hey. Hey, G.A.V.V. Did you Oh, she's just had a baby girl. Uh, are you cool now? Hi. Uh, where are you? Madaku. Uh, are you here? Madaku. Where are you here? Monday. Monday is here? Mm. Where are you here? But, uh, do, uh, Topo Koji. Ah, uh, Koji. Mm. Oh, I see. I see. How uh, uh, are you here? Uh, six years. So this is her sixth child uh, that she's uh, giving birth to. Where are you here? Where are you here? Gioco Valle, you know, when I came to Valle, give you. What did you know about? A vigilla sukuk boji, a mojo bori, allo, a tale, a le coque. But no, it's a ale la ocana, no joqua. A managing an emma. Toko is not the only place that CTFM and CDTV is building a relief center or a resettlement center for persons who have been affected by the flooding of the opening of the Akosombo Dam. Behind me is a project 
that we've started at Adan. Now, Adan in the Adan East district uh, is where the river terminates, the Volta River terminates. Persons here have been affected. People in areas like Azizakpe, people in areas like Agokpo, people in areas like Azizanya, they've all been affected. And a lot of the island communities, they've all been affected. So they have moved to put up with their family members. Others are moving to put up in uh, school projects and school house, school buildings in the bigger down area. This is a project that we cut sold for a few weeks ago and it is already rising high up. I'm going to walk inside and just see what the level is. This is the Adan project on City Newsroom on City TV. Ago. Okay. These are the workers on the Adam project. Um, they are casting the concrete for this particular pillar holding this building. Uh, but um, again, we have the same supervisor, project supervisor, who is helping with this particular work. And uh, the, the work is going on in earnest. It's a Sunday, so we, didn't, we are not seeing a lot of working, work activities happening, but they've done pretty much a lot. They have not started, they've not got into the roofing stage yet, as we saw in Toko. And of course, that's understandable because uh, the Toko project started way before uh, this Adan project, which we came to cut salt for again at this particular premise, land given to us by the district uh, um, assembly. Let me speak to, again, our same project supervisor, uh, Selassie. What is the state of work here? Uh, we are now at the lintel level. Yo, so after uh, the lintel has been casted, the concrete has been casted, then we continue to the gable. Then we start with the roofing works, just as you saw in uh, Topo. So this is where ahead, but um, what, what again, what are the estimations that you are working with in terms of uh, how long it will take you to get to the roofing sheets? Okay. Uh, what you're seeing now is uh, just uh, two weeks work now. Okay. This is two weeks? Yeah, two weeks. You started here later than Tokpo, Yeah, correct? that's what I mean. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's say uh, by a week time, seven days time, we'll start with the gable. We'll start with the gable. And the gable will be completed, let's say, by four days time. Yeah, after we start with the roofing works. Okay. How has working with these local artisans been? Uh, you are from Accra. You've come here and you're, you're using local masons, local carpenters, local electricians to do this work. How has it been like? Uh, with Ada, it's, it's a little bit, okay, flexible, because, you know, they are also in the urban system. But uh, Topo is a bit difficult, mm. because they don't understand, mm. like, the way Ada guys are. And Ada guys, they are more, <laughs> I don't know, like, they are more easily to deal with okay. than Topo people. So things are moving on very okay with here. Interesting. Yeah. If you were to project when you would finish this project, how many weeks would you give it? Uh, let's say about uh, three weeks more. About three weeks more. Then you'll be done with this. Yeah, we're done. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Selassie okay. is uh, our project uh, supervisor on the various projects that we are doing. One at Topo, one at uh, Bakpa, one here at Adda, and another one in the Volta region. It's a project that we have embarked on to um, bring in persons who have been affected by the flooding. And you see the structures are similar. The washrooms being behind me, if you look at the U-shape of the project, the washrooms here, male, female, and then on the right is a block, on the other right is a block. The idea is that when you move out of here, eventually it can be used. Uh, in Topo, the community plans to use it as a school, uh, here, the district chief executive says he plans to use it as a ICT training center or skill development center. So the land to build this particular project, when CTFM and CDTV made the request, was provided by the district chief executive for Adan East with capital at Adan. So in fact, this project is happening right behind the district assembly, um, which means that the DC, whenever she opens her windows, she sees the project ongoing. Let me speak to her. She's actually here also to observe things for herself. Madam Sarah Pobi, you're welcome to City News. Thank you. How are you um, feeling seeing this project coming up behind your, your assembly? I'm overwhelmed. Uh, I'm surprised that you gave us one month and you're looking at the time that we break the ground and looking at the state in where the project is. That means that we are due in the course of the one month that you promised us. 
I'm hmm, really amazed. As you said, if I open my windows, I just look at the project and looking at what is also happening. Our uh, victims have gone back to their various homes, but looking at the state in which they are, uh, it's very bad. I think yesterday I went with CT round to check on them. And I think this resettlement center is going to help us a lot. And so they've gone back, but things are not normal. Things are not normal. Some of them have their houses down. So they just live in the mosquito net, even not with a mattress. Now, the issue with this particular site is that you do not see the displaced people because they are not here. This is behind the district assembly in Adda East. The persons who have been displaced are in schools outside this area. Uh, that's where they are being camped. Others have had to move. In fact, my colleague Fred Duho um, came to this town on Saturday and went to these island communities to check the situation with them since the displacement happened. Let me take you there now and uh, bring you the report on the beneficiaries of this project that we are looking at here. This is the City Newsroom on City TV. My name is Umaru Sandamadu.